Okay, welcome to the lesson four for geotechnical engineering design. This lesson is about unpropped walls and especially the explanation of the theory behind all these type of walls. And this is what I'm going to do in the next slices. So there are several types of walls, but a thin wall uh, usually has to be inserted in the soil, as you see in the in the figure. And in the case of the unpropped wall, the only the only um, resistance that we can provide to these walls either is the passive pressure produced by the soil on the right side of the structure. So we are going to have active pressure because this um, load Q on top of the ground. We are going to have active pressure because the self weight of the soil to the left side of the wall. And we're going to have a resistance as a passive pressure on the right side of the wall because the soil you have on the right side of the wall. In this very simple exercise, in this very simple scheme, the only thing we have acting on the structure is the, the, the low Q and the self weight of the, of the soil. We don't have any water table producing any, any water pressure in this, uh, this example, this simple example, to understand the mechanism of this wall. And the dimensions, the general dimensions are H, the height of the wall from the ground on the right side of the, of the wall to the top of the, of, the, of the wall. And D is the distance uh, in which the wall is inserted in the, in the ground. So the data in this kind of exercises or in these kind of situations are the soil properties. And let's say, for this example, that what we have is a sand with certain uh, unit weight gamma, an angular internal friction phi, and we have these two coefficients called coefficient of active pressure and coefficient of passive pressure. They will be um, coefficients to be used to determine the active and passive pressure in both sides of the, um, of the wall. So, in terms of active pressure, the first pressure we're going to find is the pressure produced by Q, the load, the, um, which is a, is a non-permanent load. So, the diagram produces for this low is a constant diagram, which is basically a rectangle with the base coefficient of active pressure multiplied by Q. The self weight of the soil to the left side of the, of the wall is producing a pressure that is have a linear distribution. As you know, we started with zero at the surface of the ground and we increase this value until we reach this value at the end of the wall, giving us this base in here, which is the multiplication of coefficient of active pressure multiplied by gamma multiplied by the height from the base of this triangle to the surface of the ground to the left side of the structure, which is H plus D, as you can see easily in the, in the scheme. So in terms of passive pressure, we're going to have a reaction because this active pressure is an action on the wall. And this reaction will be triangular as well, linear distribution. And this value will depend, this base in here will depend on the equilibrium of this wall because this wall has to be in equilibrium as any structure in civil engineering. Um, so, but in order to, to evaluate the equilibrium, we're going to work with forces, not with diagrams directly. So we need to reduce the pressure, the triangular pressure of the active pressure, the rectangular uh, uh, diagram of pressure for the load Q and the triangular diagram for the passive pressure, we have to be reduced to forces. And these forces will be applied to the very center of every figure. So PA2 will be applied to the very center of this triangle. PA1 will be applied to the very center of this rectangle. And PP will be applied in the very center of the red triangle that represents the passive pressure. So there is something that has to be uh, clarified here. This uh, passive pressure I'm um, presenting here is the passive pressure in equilibrium. 
But there is a passive pressure called the maximum passive pressure, which is the capacity that the soil has at the right side of the wall, which is the maximum passive pressure that the soil is able to, to develop to resist the active pressure to the left side of the wall. So this maximum passive pressure can be determined a priori, considering the base of this triangle equal to the coefficient of passive pressure multiplied by gamma and multiplied by D, which is the height from the base of the triangle to the surface ground to the right side of the structure, which is the passive side of in this, in this particular problem. So the idea in here is to be sure that the passive pressure in equilibrium is less than the passive pressure maximum possible to be developed by the soil. So in order to determine the passive pressure in equilibrium, we need to understand what is the mechanism of failure of this wall. So the active pressure will act on the wall and the wall will tend to rotate around a point A at the base of the wall producing this mechanism you can see on the screen. So the active pressure will produce a rotation around the point A. So in order to ensure that there is equilibrium between the forces that are called passive, uh, active pressures and the forces or the force we call passive pressure, we need to do the summation of moment around the point A because there is a rotation. And in order to do that, we need the distances from the point A to all the forces that intervene in this problem. So we need the distance H plus D divided by 2 is the distance from A to the force PA1. The distance H plus C divided by 3, which is the distance from PA2 to the point A. And D over 3, which is the distance from the passive pressure to the point A. All these distances are perpendicular to the forces, as you know. The moments are defined as forces multiplied by distances that which are perpendicular to these forces. So once we have the distances and we, we have the forces, we can write the equilibrium equations of moments. And this is very simple to do because we have all the information. So this force PA1 PA multiplied by the distance is a positive moment because it's close-wise, produces rotation close-wise around the point A, plus the moment produced by PA2 multiplied by the distance again, positive because it's close-wise, and minus the restoring moment produced by the passive pressure, which is PP multiplied by D over 3. And all of this has to be equal to zero by equilibrium, equilibrium of moments. So if we express the passive pressure in equilibrium in terms of P1, PA1, PA2, and the distances, this is the equation we have. On the other hand, we need to take into account that these forces that represent the pressure, the active pressure to the left side and the passive pressure to the right side, are the areas of these diagrams. So PA1 is the area of this uh, rectangle, PA2 is the, uh, the area of this triangle, and PP is the area of this triangle in red. And for this reason, PA1 is equal to coefficient of active pressure times Q times the height, because the base is Ka times Q multiplied by the height is the surface or the area of this rectangular diagram. The base of this uh, triangle in here is Ka multiplied by gamma multiplied by H plus D, and multiplied by H plus D is the, the height divided by 2 is the area of this triangle in here. So we can replace the values of PA1 and PA2 in the previous equation, having as a result the expression, the general expression for the passive pressure in equilibrium for this typology of walls, which are the unproped walls, without water table, of course, because this is the simplest case you can, you can study. But this is the general formula you can apply if you want, for example, to program a spreadsheet or you can have a simple program to calculate these uh, unproped walls in, in, in a system like MATLAB, for example, or any other um, programming language. So we said previously that there is a maximum passive pressure and the idea is to have this maximum passive pressure greater than the passive pressure in equilibrium because deal will give us green lights to say, well, there is certain safety factor over one 
that uh, give us an idea that this uh, structure is stable and safe. So the coefficient or the safety factor, sorry, is defined in many ways, but one way of doing it is to say that it's a relationship between of the relation between the passive pressure, the maximum passive pressure and the passive pressure in equilibrium. So if this safety factor is greater than one, we are in good conditions. And usually in geotechnical engineering, we are talking about a safety factor between two and, and five maybe, or even more in some circumstances. But in the case when you have a safety factor equal to one, evidently the stability of the wall is compromised and you need to reinforce this, uh, this wall immediately to avoid the failure of the wall. A way of reinforcement is, is shown in the, in, the, in the figure, in the, in the screen. Finally, you have a safety factor under, after your calculation, which is less than one. The reinforcement needs to be done immediately and it's better to run from this place because you are in danger of failure of this wall. Thank you very much for watching.